Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to recreate the intro from Great Big Story YouTube channel. It's really simple, but it does have a really cool effect and I think you'll learn a couple things from this tutorial. I wasn't the original artist for this. Um, I am just duplicating it, so all credit goes to Great Big Story and whoever artist they have, he or she is pretty awesome. So anyways, let's just go ahead and jump right in. So first off, I'm going to open up Illustrator and I did recreate their logo in Illustrator. You can see this is what their logo actually looks like and I recreated it in three different parts. So the first part is the inside portion of the lightning bolt. The second part is the lightning bolt and the third part is the rocket. So um, I'm not really good at Illustrator. This took way too long. I'll probably have some sort of time lapse showing you um, all of the mistakes I made and why it took me so long. I have no idea why it did. So um, anyways, I just saved this. They're all in their own separate layers. That's how you want it to be if you're gonna import it into After Effects. So um, <clears throat> let's just open up After Effects here and I'm just going to find the file and drag it straight into my project panel. So um, when you drag something from the pro into the project panel from Illustrator, it'll ask you this. Do you want to import it as a composition or footage? You want it to be composition. That maintains the different layers. So what's great about this is I could double click this and I see the different layers and they're all separated, which is great. So um, I guess first up, I'll create a new composition, composition new. And I'm just going to set this to 2560 by 1440. That's a 2K resolution or a 1440p resolution. And 60 frames per second, eight seconds looks fine. I'm just going to rename this as um, Great Big Story. And there we are. So I'm um, coming into the logo. I'm just going to select all these layers and hit Control C. And then come here and hit Control V. And um, yeah, I'll worry about centering them up in a second. So I'm just gonna create a new background layer, layer new solid. And I'm going to use a color picker. I have a color profiler that I have um, that I created for the channel. You can see it right there. I might make that available, might not. I don't know if it will be much value to you, um, but it is for me. So I will just hit okay here and put this underneath. And I'm gonna lock it because I don't wanna be able to grab it. But uh, before I lock it, I should probably just use it as the anchor point. So just easily center up that object and then I'll lock it. So it's not linked or anything, it's just use the anchor point as reference. So I should now um, probably just rename these layers. So this is the inside of the lightning bolt. So I'll put, uh, I'm gonna name this actually bolt um, mat. Um, you'll know why in a second. Uh, I'm gonna rename this to bolt. And I'm gonna rename the bottom one to rocket. And I will drag the matte bolt on top of the rocket, just like that. So um, I'm gonna create a new null object, layer new null object. And there are um, keyboard shortcuts for all of these. I don't really use them that often, I probably should. Um, the reason why is that I do tutorials and it's a little complicated. You can't really see what I'm doing when I'm using keyboard shortcuts. But um, anyways, I just, uh, grabbed all these layers and I parented them to the null object. That way I could just use this for scale, which is nice. So um, let's see, uh, let's just make all of these layers invisible for a second and I'm gonna work on the lettering and the circle. So just creating a new text layer, gonna caps lock, great big story, undo caps lock and reduce the letter spacing just like that. Set up the anchor point, press Y on the keyboard and drag it to the center. And then just center this up using again the background and dragging it slightly down below holding shift keeps it on a linear path. So for the circle, I'm just gonna go to the ellipse tool and holding shift creates a perfect ellipse. I'm just gonna create an ellipse again, press Y on the keyboard, drag the anchor point to the center. And I'm just going to center this up in the composition holding shift, just dragging it up. So grabbing both of these, I'm gonna make the proportional grid available to see, so that way I can quickly kind of get a, a rough guesstimate as to where the center is for this object. So um, I'm gonna rename this shape layer to circle and great big stories text looks fine. And I'm just gonna drag these down below the rocket. So I guess at this point I can make the rocket visible and make sure that it is centered into the, um, into the circle. And then I could probably now scale this down a little bit to better, excuse me, fit into the circle. So just like that. 
Um, what I also am going to do, I'm also going to just select all of these rocket layers and go to um, Effect Generate Fill. That way I can make them all white. And I'll make the, the matte layer, the, the lightning matte layer, I'm going to make it kind of like a greenish color. Um, it's just going to be used as a matte so you won't be able to see it. The reason why I did that is that way it, I could kind of see the difference. So um, at this point, I want the mat, actually the bolt mat, to follow the bolt. Um, I think that's a little bit more important here than the null one because the bolt's connected to the null one also. So what I want to do with this bolt mat and the rocket is make sure I, if you don't have this toggle uh, modes, you could turn them on over here, but I want to add a track mat to the rocket and I want to set it to alpha inverted mat to the bolt. So basically what that does is the, the center of that bolt kind of is cut out of the rocket. So um, you can just kind of see what that does. It just simply cuts it out. So that's good. Now, now what that actually does is when I move the bolt, so if I move the position of the bolt, since the mat is connected to the bolt um, and the rocket is matted to the, to the bolt interior, um, when I move this, it, it mats the whole thing, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want it to do. So, um, that's good. Uh, let's see if it's centered up properly and it is. The one thing I think I want to do, um, just looking at their logo, is I think their bolt is kind of more like down here like this. At some point, I think the bolt might have moved and uh, yeah, yeah. So that's actually where I want it to be. Sorry, I just looked at their logo and I was like, hmm, something looks odd. Okay, so uh, that looks good. Um, so I guess now we could kind of just start animating some things here. The first thing I'll do is the text because I think that this is going to be really helpful for, for a lot of people. Um, you see here in the text dialog box that you can increase the, the width in between the letters, but there's no actually way to animate that. Um, there's really not a good way to animate it because you can't set keyframes, but I did find out a way to do that and this took me a surprisingly long amount of time to find out how to do. But if you just open up the text layer and go to animate, you go to tracking. Why it's called tracking, I'm not sure, but um, that allows you to set keyframes for that. So I'm gonna come to like three seconds just to give myself enough time, maybe two and a half seconds, just to give myself enough time ahead of time to do the rocket animation. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. So um, I'm just gonna set a keyframe, maybe move it up to three, uh, three and a half seconds and uh, come back to two and a half seconds. And I'm just going to increase the size here so basically the text just kind of shrinks in. And I'm also going to add a scale property to the circle, set a keyframe, and maybe increase the size. And then coming ahead of these keyframes, I'm just gonna hit J on the keyboard and it will snap it back to this tracking keyframe on the text. And I'm just gonna scale this down just like that. And that probably looks good. So now we just have something that kind of looks like that. Selecting both these layers, hitting U on the keyboard, um, shows me only the keyframes, so I don't have to see all the other properties. And what I want to do is now bring this null and bring it down to the circle. That way they all kind of shrink down together, but I can still mess with the rocket independently. So, okay. Simple as that, next step would be maybe to smooth this out a tad. I'm going to use my smoothing tool here. Um, and we'll see what that kind of looks like. That might be a little too fast, but what's great about this is I could actually drag these keyframes out. And what I wanna do is this all stuff actually comes into view just without it being animated. It just kind of like snaps into view. So what I could do is I could just select both of these layers holding Alt and then press left bracket, which is just to the right of the P key. Um, hit left bracket and it kind of cuts them all. And now we have something that kind of looks like that. So that looks pretty good already. Um, the reason why I cut it um, after this keyframe is that it's a really fast dip. I'll show you what this looks like in the graph editor. Um, it kind of looks like this. So basically what I did was I cut it off about right there. So I'm kind of cutting off a, the really fast part of this, uh, of this animation. So 
Um, if, by the way, this tool here, it's called Motion V2. You can search it on Google. It's made by a, a guy named Mount Mograph. He is a great, um, great guy. And um, he did, he did, he used to post a lot of tutorials on YouTube, but you should go check him out. You'll learn a ton of stuff. He was a big inspiration. So, okay, this is all done. Now it's time to get this rocket kind of doing its little animation. So um, one thing is that the actual rocket um, does have a 3D component to it. So I'm just gonna ensure that it that it is. So by clicking this, this um, sets up a 3D layer. And uh, at this point here, I want the the rocket and everything to kind of be in place. So let's see, I'm gonna do this in two pieces because sometimes messing with, with multiple position keyframes for an overshoot kind of gets a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna use this null object um, to do my overshooting and the rocket and the bolt to kind of do the general motion. So let's see here. Um, holding the rocket and the bolt, I'm gonna press P on the keyboard and set position keyframes. And then coming back to maybe one second, again, I'm gonna move these keyframes around. I am just going to, for some reason, this position should be zero on the bolt. I don't know why it was not. Um, yep, yeah, but just coming back here, selecting both of these. I'm just going to drag this down in the, um, I guess that would be the Y direction. So you can kind of see them coming up. And I'm gonna drag these over just a tad. So there is an overshoot component to this. So what I'm gonna do is um, take this null object and hit P on the keyboard. And I'm also gonna set position keyframes for this. And let's see. Um, okay, so to accomplish this overshoot, I'm gonna set a position there, position here, and I'm just going to kind of increase the height of this. So you'll now see that we kind of, uh, we didn't quite have what I wanted it to be. Let's see if I increase this more. So you kind of see that we do kind of have an overshoot there. I could overshoot it in in these layers, but the reason why I'm not is that when you add smoothing to this or when you, you mess with the um, graph editor, sometimes there's some really weird things going on. And it has to do with the fact that when you right click these and go to keyframe interpolation, um, this goes to Bezier and some things start to get messed up with the animation. So if you're having really janky animations where things are moving, where there's no keyframes, that's probably why. So, okay. So this kind of comes up and for this rocket, it obviously needs some rotation in the in the Z direction or Y direction or one of the directions, which, uh, okay, it's Y direction. So coming back here, pressing J on the keyboard snaps to my back keyframe, which is perfect. I'm gonna set a keyframe for the Y position and up here, I'm gonna set a keyframe here and I'm gonna make this spin one time. So now we have something that kind of looks like this, just like that. So obviously it doesn't look very smooth. Um, one thing that I want to do though, is I'm gonna grab these these um, keyframes on the bolt and I'm gonna hold alt and press um, right on the key, right on the directional pad a couple times. And that's gonna kind of add a little bit of a delay, which I think looks good. Uh, maybe not, we'll, we'll come back to that and see if that's what I wanna do. But anyways, um, grabbing all these keyframes, I'm gonna add some smoothing to this. So if you wanna see what that looks like, I'll just select this and open up the, um, the graph editor, basically you just wanna grab these Bezier handles and move them. And that changes the, the movement. But um, yeah, I'm using my toolbox here. So I'm kind of running out of room here. Just gonna highlight all of these layers and hit you on the keyboard just to make sure I'm not looking at uh, stuff that I don't need to be. And it seems that I did miss adding the, the positional smoothing. So let's see. So that looks, pretty good. Um, I think one thing that I do want to do is I do want to increase the smoothing aspect here on the bolt. Or, or maybe I will move, move them over just a tad. So there is a little bit of just like that. So I think that this whole thing kind of happens a little too fast. So just gonna select all of these. Well, 
You know, it's hard to say if it's moving too fast or whether it's too much of an overshoot. And I think I'm gonna err on the side of too much overshoot. So I'm just gonna drag that down a tad. Yeah, I think there is too much overshoot. So just kind of bringing that down. By the way, if you hold control when you when you drag these, it makes it a lot slower, so it's not as, as gradual. You see, if I just drug it over, it'd be a lot, whereas when I'm holding control, it's a lot less, so that's good. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. And I do think that it's a little actually slow, so I'm just gonna drag these keyframes over. I'm gonna just make it a little bit faster. I guess next step would be would be to, I guess, add a, another circle here and use it as a mat for the rocket. And I am gonna add a little bit of a fast blur to it. So just come to the effects and presets, add a flash, fast blur, kind of a little bit of a blur there. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna well, hmm, this is where things are gonna get complicated, but um, okay, well, let's not worry about it too much. Grabbing this null object um, all the way down to the bolt, I'm gonna hit Control Shift C, rename this rocket animation, and now link this to the circle again because the null object was connected to the circle, but it's it's no longer in this composition, so it doesn't know where to, where to look. So um, I'm gonna use this as a mat. Well, not matte as in the name matte, as a matte as in a matte layer for the rocket. Just like that. And I might even scale this up even more. Just see the tip of the rocket kind of, kind of coming out a little bit. So maybe I'll scale this down just a tad bit. And I think I want these to come into view about there. Let's see, right there I think is where I want them to come into view. Drag these keyframes over just to make it a little bit nicer. It's all about adding the little details. Um, the, the truth is, is that the more time you put into it, the better it will be. So here I think maybe we're what, to be honest, I don't know how, how far we are into this into this tutorial, but um, it's not nearly as long as it took the person to actually make this. It probably took him uh, many days of making it perfect, whereas I'm just kind of doing it really quickly. So again, I think it is a little bit low or it's a little bit slow. So I'm just going to maybe tighten this up even more. See what this looks like. You know, ag again, it's all about making it as perfect as you want it to be, um, which, for everyone is a little bit different. That looks pretty good. That looks almost exactly how theirs is um, with just maybe just a little bit, a little bit simpler. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please be sure to give the video a like, subscribe and check out the two videos on screen. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.